We are live. So thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight on our Wednesday night live procast. Tonight we have a really uh, great guest. Uh, we've been anticipating having her on the, the weekly live. We also have a special guest in uh, Joey Lai, who has been on our show before, and she's going to uh, actually do the uh, hosting tonight for this uh, live event. And tonight we have uh, the four-time All-American, two-time medal-winning Olympian Kelly Kretschmann, who has just come on board as our new National Director of Hitting. And tonight we have our 2021 uh, Olympic um, medal winner, Joey Lai, from the Canadian softball team. And she is going to do the initial uh, hosting for this live interview tonight. And then we're going to go into the Area Scouts normal presentation where we show you as parents and athletes exactly what the Area Scouts platform can do for you. So I'm going to give the stage to you, Joey, and I'm going to let you uh, conduct the interview for tonight. Thank you both for, for being here. Amazing. Well, thank you for passing the baton on over. I'm so excited to, um, to interview Kelly. We crossed paths many times on the field as athletes and finally got to know each other this uh, summer and fall working at Athletes Unlimited and just a wonderful human in addition to being an amazing athlete with all of the accolades. Uh, if we spent all the time reading through her bio, we would have no time for questions. So we'll, we'll just get to it, Kelly. Um, so I wanna take you back to your youth and just talk a little bit about the sports that you were involved with growing up, uh, obviously including softball, but what else did you dabble with as a youngster? Uh, well, I was originally from Long Island, New York. So um, growing up, softball wasn't uh, super popular uh, in New York back in the old days. Uh, so I played baseball. Um, baseball, I played soccer. I played volleyball. I ran track terrible at that um but then i moved down to, i've actually played ice hockey for a little bit as well um and then i moved to florida when i was 10 and i continued to play baseball i continued to play all the sports um and i didn't actually switch over till softball till i got into high school my high school team or high school offered a fast pitch softball team and uh they didn't really give me the choice told me i had to switch over so um that's when i realized that uh, softball was going to be my new path. Um, I continued to play basketball, volleyball, um, and soccer in high school. Um, I played all of those sports until I ended up going to college. Um, I actually had the opportunity, if I wanted to, to play soccer and softball at LSU and chose otherwise um, and just chose Alabama, and here I am. So I played, I played a ton of sports growing up. I loved every single one of them. Um, I think it made me a better athlete um, overall. And I'm very fortunate that I was able to do all those. That's amazing. I'm super passionate about multi-sport athletes. And I think it's just awesome that you were able to balance so many sports growing up and in through high school uh, before choosing softball for college. Through all of those teams in different sports, was there an influential coach that you would would like to share with us today a story about them perhaps i would have to actually probably say my father um although i hated every minute of him being my coach uh, because you know as kids we we don't think our parents know anything right um but i was very fortunate that he was able to do all of the sports with me so he was he was just able to push me. He was able to just teach me the things that I needed to know, the little things to just continue to grow. Um, and he just was so willing to just do whatever, make me, I beat him up. I mean, I remember he caught me when I pitched in baseball and if he made me mad, I would bounce the ball short and hit him in the shins on purpose. And, but, you know, Lord love him. He just kept catching me and kept, you know, hitting me balls. Um, I don't know if you guys remember those long sticks that you hold out and the, and you hit you hit the end with the ball. He would hold that with a, a gardening glove and I would just rip his hands apart. Um, but 
you know, I would have to say him. I, he stopped coaching me when I got into high school. Um, so I think it was a good transition for me to not listen to dad anymore and um, so listen to some other opinions. And um, that was probably best. But when I was little, it would definitely be him. And then I've had very fortunate um, coaches later in my career, uh, Mike Andrea with the Olympic team, uh, Patrick Murphy at Alabama. Um, I was fortunate enough to have the entire Florida State staff uh, coaching me on the pride. Um, and, you know, I've known a lot of coaches throughout my career as well and played with a lot of significant coaches uh, throughout my career. So, um, but growing up, I would definitely have to say my father and, until he, I told him no. <laughs> 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 So if you could go back to, let's say your 12 year old self, what piece of advice would you give yourself? Well, I would have to probably say I was, I was extremely blessed to be able to go to Alabama. Um, I would never change that for anything thinking now. Um, but I really, really, really wanted to go to Notre Dame and I did not have the grades to get into Notre Dame. Um, so my, my, I would tell myself to pay more attention to that, uh, and take it a little bit more seriously than I did. Um, and the other thing I would probably tell myself is to enjoy everything I was doing. I think I got so wrapped up in because I played so many sports, um, and I wanted to be just the best at every sport I did, um, that I don't, I'm not too sure that I, I enjoyed it as much as I probably could have. Um, and I just see so many kids these days that, you know, that, they just play one sport now and focus so much on it and they're getting recruited so young now and, and all of those things that I don't know that they necessarily uh, are having fun with their peers and, and enjoying actually what they're doing. So those will probably be the, the two, two biggest things. I know it's kind of cliche. Everyone says, oh, you got to pay, pay, pay attention to your academics, but I wish I would have. Um, maybe I would have gotten their name, but, you know, things work out for the best and uh I loved everything about Alabama, so. Awesome, thank you. And so at what point in your softball career, obviously started a little later than a lot of softball uh, professionals, at what point did you realize I could be an international star? I could be a nine time, it is nine time, right? A professional all-star? You would know better than me. It, it played so long, it all runs together at this point. So we'll go with it. We'll go with nine. <laughs> um, I always wanted to be an Olympian. Um, I had an American flag above my bed ever since I was old enough to understand what the Olympics were. Um, and then in 1996 was going to be my junior year in high school. Um, yes, I'm that old. Uh, the Olympics had softball and I just remember thinking like, are you kidding me? Like I can be an Olympian playing softball. And I knew I was always better at softball than I was soccer or basketball. Um, and, but all I knew was I had to play basketball to play in the Olympics, really, uh, you know, soccer. I, I was probably better at basketball than I was necessarily at soccer. Uh, I was a goalie, so I was short, so I don't know how far that was really going to take me, but um, it was like a lightning bolt when I was like, man, like, well, this is going to be something I possibly could do. So that was probably my first uh, realization that um, I could possibly be in the Olympics playing softball. Um, and then I was just fortunate enough my freshman year, after my freshman year at Alabama, they invited me to national team tryouts, and then I had been part of the program uh, ever since, so. That's amazing. So while you were at Alabama, what was your favorite thing about being a student athlete? The football games. Absolutely. The football games. Uh, you know, as again, I growing up in New York is was always Alabama football and Notre Dame football on the television. So that's just what I, you know, watched every Saturday. It was, that's what I watched. Um, so when I finally got to Alabama, it was just an exciting experience to be able to be in that stadium with, you know, at that time it was an over 80,000 capacity um, stadium and being able to go to the games and then have the 
the coolness of still being a, an athlete in another sport and to be around all the other athletes. Um, you know, I, I guess another cool thing was all this free stuff we got, you know, um, although the stuff that they get now triples and doubles what we got. I remember getting like one pair of practice gear and, you know, that's what we wore all week. You wash it every day. Um, now they get like, you know, four or five of those things, but um, just the whole, I think the whole experience of, going to class, but then like being part of a community of athletes, I think. And, um, it really is like a, a community of like, you're just with a bunch of similar people at Alabama. Like you're an athlete and you're like, there's students. Like if you're an athlete, you hang out with athletes and you're just like a, a little community. Um, so that was, that was probably the coolest part. And, you know, when you're one of the best football programs in the country, it's easy to say football. So, <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So whether it be at Alabama or your professional career or with Team USA, what, what's your favorite memory as a player? Everyone, I think, expects me to say winning a gold medal um, is my favorite memory. Granted, that's an amazing um thing that I have accomplished. Um, I would have to say though, that running out on the field for the first time at the Olympics and turning around, I played right field. So turning around and seeing my parents in the stands and seeing everyone else's parents in the stands. And then just having that realization that all of the things that I had worked so hard for and the dreams that I had, had fine, that they just came true. And there was nothing more gratifying that I could have ever done in my career than that one moment that I had successfully accomplished those things. Um, and then the gold medal was just like, you know, an added bonus on top of it. Um, but just, you know, everyone wants this, Oh, I'll stand on the podium. And those are all to me, the added extra things that, that come and they're cool. They're awesome. They're not very many people in this world get to do those things obviously you got to do it. So, you know, what I'm talking about, um, but man, I just remember that first moment running out in that field and thinking, man, I did it. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. And then seeing my parents in the stands and all their hard work and, and things that they have done through me throughout my entire career to push me and help me get to that moment too. So. Amazing. And so, yes, you did it as a player and you did it again as a player and you were able to return to the Olympic stage as a coach this past summer with Team USA in Tokyo. Uh, what, what was your favorite thing about being on that journey with, with this group, what, whether it be during the preparation or in Tokyo? It was a very unexpected journey. Um, I, I was not supposed to be uh, helping them at all. Um, but I had you know, growing up in Florida, Ken Erickson was their head coach. Um, he recruited me at USF. So we, we've known each other for quite some time. And um, he found out that I was living in, in the Tampa area um, and he needed help because his other coaches on his staff were uh, college coaches at major universities and they could just couldn't take the time. And then COVID hit um, and they really couldn't take time off. And he no longer could take time off as well. Um, he was taking a sabbatical for a year from USF when it, the original, when the Olympics were originally supposed to happen. Um, and then USF said, no, you can't do that a whole nother year. Um, so I just kind of got thrown into uh, almost being the head coach. <laughs> I felt like I was the head coach in their whole training um, from January to June, um, kind of just with his, with his obviously guidance and things telling me what to do and and stuff like that but I loved every minute of it um I love working with the caliber of an athlete um the girls were so awesome and amazing and receptive to everything I had to say everything I had to help them with they were just so responsive and wanting to know everything that I had experienced um so that made it just that much more um fun for me um just getting to be a part of it. Uh, you know, obviously like my fiance was on the team. So that was an added bonus <laughs> getting to, you know, experience those things with her as well. Um, but just to be able to give back to, to the program that, you know, honestly had 
catapulted my career into what it is. Um, I would not have probably had so many opportunities in the sport and played for so long if I hadn't have been part of those three teams. Um, so just to be able to help those girls and, you know, the goal was to obviously win the gold medal back that uh, I had been a part of losing uh, in 2008, um, you know, and they fell short, but, um, you know, just to, just to be able to be a part of it and to help them, uh, hopefully give them and learn, help them learn something that, and hopefully I help them get better in some way. And that's all I could have asked for. So. Awesome. Well, seeing the impact you had on players during Athletes Unlimited, I have no doubt that you made every single one of those players better. And you mentioned that that roster was receptive to your coaching and that's so great to hear and makes me even more excited for all the athletes that you are about to impact across the area scouts platform and just moving on talking about area scouts what was it that first interested you about becoming involved with the platform and what now that you've started kind of learning a little bit more excites you about it Honestly, you and your just excitement and passion that you uh, just showed me talking about it with me. I just, I remember asking you at Athletes Unlimited, like what you were doing and you started off by telling me that you were helping area scouts and, and deep diving into it. Just you talking about how they were, you know, honing in on specific things that athletes needed to learn before they could advance at different stages. And you know, that's been a number one thing that I, I watch these travel ball kids and I, you know, I watch these younger girls and, and it's like they get thrown into the fire without knowing really the basic things. Um, and they don't even know how to move their body correctly and, you know, how to stand on one foot without falling over, uh, you know, things that we don't really pay attention to, but are what make us good athletes and what can make us phenomenal softball players or just phenomenal athletes in general. If we don't learn how to do these little things, we can't go any, can't advance any further. We can only get to a certain plateau and that's it. That's all we can do. Um, so just like your passion for it and just like learning more about it. Um, and then honestly, the, that conversation with Lance and him telling me more deep diving more into like what, what the whole thing was about. And uh, you know, I, I just get excited to help the younger youth. Um, again, I think that we get, we have so much, data driven we're so data driven right now on you know you got to have this number and and that speed and, and all these things but like how do how do we get there how, how do we start and how do we build to get to those plateaus or those numbers that are expected of us to be and considered a, a top level athlete if we're at that number um you know i just talked about it before but if you know we don't know how to you know do a five ten five properly or, or just movement of our own body like how do we expect to swing a, a bat and hit a ball when we can't even you know run five feet without falling over ourselves or you know whatever it is um so that's just exciting to me um and and i just think that we move past the basics of of teaching fundamentals so quickly because again we're just trying to get college scholarships and and be recruited and be being seen that you know we're not really learning the, the fundamentals properly or even like I love the fact that you kind of have to like pass things so you can, before you can move, move on. I think that's cool because whereas we don't even, if a kid messes up or a kid doesn't understand what we're saying, most coaches, they just move on to the next kid and, and then that, that's it. They, they either figure it out or they don't. Right. So um, I, I think that's, that's the exciting thing for me about this whole thing. Amazing. I think I could sit here and ask you questions all night long. So I'm hoping there are some questions in the chat that uh, Lance can pass on to us so we can uh, get Kelly answering a couple questions from the people. Yeah, there is. I have some. And it's, and it's funny you mentioned the, the introduction for Kelly because I, I – there's just there was literally so much. I'm like I, I can't sit here and read all this. I'll take up ten minutes of the whole interview if you sit here and introduce and say everything. Um, and as far as AU uh, athletes unlimited goes, um, you know just the fact that uh, that they they brought us Joey and that Joey brought us you and and uh, a couple other directors from athletes unlimited i'm uh, i'm i can't tell you how excited i am about them just launching these other sports for women too and given i i feel like you know even everything we're doing for the for girls sports today as well as the boys that we're almost everything we're working with them now is giving them that path and they can actually shoot for 
to play professionally now, which they really didn't have that option to do before other than, you know, playing in the Olympics. That was kind of their goal. And now they can say, okay, well, if I can't make the Olympics, at least I can uh, play professionally still in Athletes and Limit. I think it's going to keep a lot of girls in their sports too and, and, and continue to, to work even harder to try to get to that goal. So I I, I, I want to do whatever we can to to promote uh, Athletes Unlimited, too, and keep working with all the directors that we can with them. I, I think it's amazing. So I'm going to answer. I got, I mean, I'm going to, I got about 12 here. Let's, I'm going to, I picked out a couple of them. A couple of them are the same. They're, they're, we always get some of the similar questions. So um, uh, Marissa from Kentucky, huge fan of yours, went to Alabama when you were there. I got to see you play a few times. Do you ever go back to Alabama for the games? Oh, not as much as I should. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I've been playing in Japan for the last three years, um, except for last year was my, I was done the year before last year. So um, my opportunities of the time of when I can go is, is pretty limited, um, but I need to go back more. I definitely do. I'm actually planning on going to uh, Tucson to watch them play at the Arizona tournament um, in the second week in February, I think it is. Um, a little, I can see them. And then I, you know, obviously I've played with Caitlin Lowe and Lauren Lappin and uh, watch them do their thing. And I'm super excited for Caitlin Lowe being the new head coach at Arizona and, and getting to see her do her thing. So roll tide. Um. Hi, Sandy from Oregon. Uh, did playing in the Olympics still give you the jitters when you got up to bat, even though you had played at Alabama all that time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you no, know, everyone thinks that um, when I was at Alabama, that it's the Alabama that it is now. Um, funny story, when my first two years at Alabama, we played on a park field. Uh, we put up and took down temporary fence every practice and for every game. Uh, we didn't move into the Rhodes house until my junior year. And at that point, the whole brickyard wasn't done yet. Um, we only had the 1500 seat stadium. And I think our, our first game, we sold out the stadium and then we probably averaged maybe 500 fans. And most of them might've been our parents and, and brothers and sisters or, you know, <laughs> um, so it is not what it is now. So as far as hitting and hitting in front of the, uh, you know, on the Olympic stage compared to, you know, playing in Alabama, um, nothing can compare. I mean, even the college world, I, you know, we went to the college world series my junior year and even playing on that stage. Um, you know, I, that's the one thing I tried to tell these guys um, this past year was you can throw away all your world championship games. You can throw away, all your women's college world series championship get like you can throw all of those out the window when you get to the Olympics and you step on that stage, it's an experience and it's a feeling that you'll never have experienced ever in your life. It's, it's like the college world series world championship games on steroids. Like it's the only way that I can explain it. I mean, it is something that you can't recreate. You just, you just gotta go through the emotion let it hit you and then just play the game that you've practiced and played for however long. Oh, that's a great answer. Uh, Kyle uh, from Michigan, my daughter and I are from Michigan. My 13 year old daughter plays both baseball and softball. Uh, you mentioned you played baseball. She has a question and that is what position did you play? And I, I have a question to ask you for myself if you dominated baseball like you did softball. <laughs> <laughs> I I you pitched. make the boys look silly, I guess. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I pitched, well, I pitched, I caught, and I played shortstop. Um, but I mostly pitched. And yeah, I I, I made them look <laughs> dumb. Uh, I can remember one of my little league games, and I can hear a mom yelling in the stand, You're going to let a girl strike you out? Like, I loved every minute of it. You know, I had a nasty curveball. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, but then I will say this when I started to get into like majors and the bigger field, I, I, I needed to go away because I was staying this big and the boys were getting bigger and I was not getting so big. So, uh, you know, being able to throw it by them and, and the field just got a little bit too big for me at that time. So, but yeah, 
I, I loved it. I, I think, it, honestly, I think playing against the boys made me as competitive as I am um, because I always just wanted to beat them. I wanted to be better than them. Um, and I hate losing. So I think playing against boys made that because I probably if I played softball, I probably would have been better than most of the girls. And that wouldn't have been very fun. And I, you know, you know, every every season in our in our town, there's always a standout girl that's playing playing baseball. Right. And, and yeah, every single season, there's someone's doing it. I keep trying to. So my my boys play baseball. And my daughter is one year below them in softball, so when they when the ages come together there and that they can play on the same same team, um, there's a girl that plays on my my middle son's team, and she just won't leave baseball. I keep asking her to come play softball that because I love working with that coach, her dad, <laughs> and I always want to pull her over to softball. And she says, "No, I'm not going over there with your daughter. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I love baseball. I'm going to stay here and play baseball." Good for her. Yeah. Uh, Keisha from Alabama grew up a fan. I just wanted to ask if we can see your gold medal, if it is close to you, of course. <laughs> no, it is actually at my mother's house in a safe. Oh, okay. I do not Where trust myself your mother's house? at all. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will, I'll tell you the story. Uh, we were, uh, me and Allie Carter were at my parents' house, uh, this past weekend and her parents were in town. And she was showing them her gold, her silver gold medal, her silver medal for the first time. And they asked to see mine. And I can tell you that mine look like this big compared to like this. My gold medal is like this big and her silver medal is massive. Like it made my gold medal look pathetic. Even my <laughs> silver medal from uh, China is not even compared to what, I mean, your, your guys' medals are so heavy. And they're just so much bigger than than Athens. It was like a it was I wanted like a silver dollar almost, like a little bit bigger than that. So what but decides that? Why what why the difference? I just think through the years they've just gotten more extravagant and bigger and And Tokyo had an extra year to prepare them, so Yeah. Right. They did. They're recycled cell phones, apparently. <laughs> that hurt. I don't know. Uh, Renee, I suffered an ACL in high school. I didn't get to play past that point. Was wondering if you had had any significant injuries when you played or any nagging injuries that you really remember. I was extremely fortunate enough to not have any significant injuries at all. Really? My entire career. The biggest injury I ever had was a rolled ankle, a sprained ankle twice. And that was playing volleyball at the rec center with Patrick Murphy not very happy <laughs> but yeah i have been extremely uh fortunate enough to not have dealt with anything um that's amazing yeah i i really i think i i talk about this a lot that i i think it had to do with the fact that i played a lot of sports and i played everything and that my body learned to do different cuts and the different moves and um and I think that helped. Uh, you know, I think we just do so much one-sided stuff that if we make one more wrong cut or do something that we're not used to doing, then that's when the injuries happen. And um, yeah, and I just think I would just was extremely blessed and knock on wood, nothing will still happen. Not that I'm playing and it matters anymore, but. <laughs> uh, all right, good. Two more here. Uh, have you ever wanted? to be a head coach for say a D1 college, if a D1 college called you today, would you accept a head coaching position? At this moment, no, not, not, not a D1 college job. No, I, uh, I don't, how do I, I, I'm trying to be politically correct about this, but, <laughs> um, I don't really necessarily like the state of college softball right now, as far as uh, the coaching player portal. I don't, I, I just don't like it all. I don't like that. I'm putting, I would be putting my life and career on the line for an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old that can accuse me of something that I never did. And I could be fired and lose. I, I just don't like the state of all of what it's in. And I, I don't know. I, I'm, not very politically correct. So this is terrible for me to answer this, but 
Uh, at this moment, being a head coach, no. Uh, I have thought about going back into college coaching, um, but I'm not too sure I'd want to be a head coach and be responsible for all of those things. I feel like I would be more um, doing administrative stuff than actual the coaching part of it, and I like the coaching part of it better. Right. No, that makes total sense. Sorry, I'm not very um, <laughs> smart at saying all the right things all the time. No, that's that makes total sense. You're you're under a spotlight today. You're that, that's yeah, yeah. the best the, the best way to put it. You're under a spotlight, and if you say or do something wrong, you can, you know, you can be judged for it. That's and yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. That's that that is the the reality of it. Uh, do you currently do any kind of uh, private instruction or camps for high school age girls, or do you plan to in the future at all? I currently do not do any uh, instruction or camps. Um, I've done them in the past. I'm not opposed to doing doing camps at all. Um, I'm actually just got put in charge of the high performance program at USA softball, um, which we're trying to turn it into um, similar to like what ODP does for, for soft, for soccer. Um, we're trying to name national teams for each age group, um, trying to kind of make the national program a bigger deal and, and get people excited to want to be wearing USA across your chest. Sorry, Joey, but um, at, a, at a younger level and get them more involved and get, and get girls more exposure to um, be a part of that program. Um, we've not done a very good job in the past with USA softball of getting across the country. We have limited ourselves to certain areas to where we think people can play softball. Um, and there's just not a lot of opportunities for girls say in Maine and Delaware and uh, you know North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, I always use Odyssey Alexander as a great example. Like there's no reason why she was never on a junior national team or, and you know, she's just someone that was missed because of where she came from um, and not being on the right travel ball team, things like that. So uh, my goal is to just make this program give more exposure to those kids that never would have been seen before um, and just long-term to get them college scholarships, whether it's smaller division or or division one power five school. So. And do you think that's because of the, of who is running USA softball in certain areas? They're just not as attentive in, in other areas. Is that kind of what's like, what, are, what, why are those girls missing out on that in some of the areas? I just, I think a lot of it has to do with just the travel ball teams that they're on um, and going to the right tournaments and, and things like that. Right. Um, you know, everyone goes to PGF or, you know, Alliance is now starting their their uh, tournaments that they have um you know triple crown with the fire the colorado tournaments um you know a lot of uh, people play you know back when i played asa gold nationals 1800 gold nationals was every team like if you wanted to be if you were going to division one power five school you were on one of the best teams at gold nationals like you that was it and now it's more pgf and going to colorado you know it's just more spread out tournaments that are drawing people everywhere and you know who knows what team to get on and it's, it's a it's a very uh tough culture to be a part of these right. days I feel like so um yeah I'm just trying to give kids more opportunities that normally wouldn't and again just try and make the national team more more exciting um for every age group because the WBSC is now I don't know if Joey knows this, but um, starting to add younger age groups into international competitions. Um, so we have to at some point pick 14 under teams. So why not start it now where we are starting identifying these girls at an earlier age? Well, after hearing that question, I'm definitely going to be texting Joey, seeing if we can't get our dream team of uh, directors out for a camp, for a softball camp somewhere. <laughs> somewhere convenient for all of you that would be amazing to have everyone there at one one big national camp so definitely has my wheels wheels spinning so awesome let's make it happen yeah <laughs> 
Uh, so thank you uh, again, both of you, for uh, coming on tonight. That was uh, an awesome interview. Appreciate your your time for again both of you coming on and, and doing this. Um, you're welcome to stay, but I know you're you're busy. We're gonna do our normal walkthrough of the platform. And Brian, if you had any other closing questions or anything you wanted to to end with, all right, Kelly. You know, thank you for joining Area Scouts, and I literally look forward to the amazing things you can do for youth athletes. And I wanted to ask one question. Because I grew up an ND fan myself. Um, and uh, have you ever got to South Bend for a game? Oh, Football yeah. Game? Oh, you yeah. Have. Yeah, me too. It's like a bucket USC. list. I went to the USC game, uh, gosh, probably six, seven years ago. It was oh, awesome. That's was incredible. Awesome. Yeah, I went to uh, BC. So I had my local, because I'm from Massachusetts. So I had uh, you know, the Boston College team playing them. And, oh, man, it was it was incredible to see there. And being part of that atmosphere was just electric you know yeah yeah it's it's pretty amazing uh, i mean i'm a little biased because i think alabama's atmosphere is on par uh but yeah it was definitely i mean i was you know rudy was my i wanted, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to be rudy you know uh Everyone loves rudy so to to go through the tunnel you know i i knew the softball coaches so you know i got a tour of the campus and and got to go out on the field and all that stuff so i was i get just lucky but um yeah, it was like, man, my I just felt the little kid in me the whole time I was there. Yeah, I was like a kid in a candy shop, man. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think I bought the whole bookstore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> while I was there, so. That's great. Yeah, yeah and, and the great thing is, is that uh, Patrick Murphy loves Notre Dame too. So whenever I talk about it or, I, you know, he doesn't get mad at me that I just say that <laughs> all the Notre Dame stuff. Cause he's like, Oh, okay. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, welcome board. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Again, thank you. Thank to both. Thanks to both of you again. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having us and hope everybody enjoys the rest of the call. Thank you. Thanks Joey. All right, I'm going to give you ability to share. That was awesome. Yeah, what a what a great interview. Yeah. Just the experiences is just outstanding. And I will be following up on that national camp too. That would Absolutely. Be, that would be that would be unreal. Oh my god, I'll be there. I want to see that. It's going to be great. Okay, um, so uh, we usually try to keep these under an hour, so I'm going to try and keep mine portion of the presentation under uh, 10 minutes, and uh, then we're going to play a little video on our base assessment. Uh, Anthony and Zillow, our director of sports medicine, could not be here tonight, um, and uh, we're going to play a little video just to give you a background of what the base assessment is. So um, I will tell you that you know, we, as you just saw, the directors involved with this program are incredible. Um, if you'd like to see more about our directors, baseball, softball, football, uh, volleyball, which is coming soon, uh, you can go to areascouts.com. Check that out. You can also, if you are an athlete or parent of an athlete, you can click on creating a free profile with us and uh, an evaluator will reach out to you uh, to see if you'd like an evaluation. Um, also, you know, we will show this later in the presentation, but there is some free material that you can access uh, through the free profile as well. And if you are uh, local to some of our events, you can click on our events page. Um, they pop up every uh, every month or so, and we, we, we populate those so you can check out if there's any events in your area to join us for a base assessment or an on-field assessment. Okay, so base, like I said, I'm going to show a little video um, after my presentation, but BASE is an assessment that provides the athlete with a complete outline of their overall physical foundation. And so important, uh, I think you heard Kelly say uh, a few times during the interview um, that young athletes need to move properly. And that's exactly what BASE allows the athlete to do. It gives them where they're at and where they need to get to from a mobility, a flexibility standpoint, and athleticism standpoint. So um, stay tuned for that video from Anthony uh, to go more over over the base program. Okay, so base is the first step. That's what all of our athletes go through. We wanna make sure that we are reducing the risk of injury, that our athletes are moving properly so they can do the movements that are going to be asked of them from a fundamental standpoint on the field. 
On-field assessment is the second portion. This is the sport-specific portion. Uh, this is an example of our softball and our baseball on-field assessment, where we're going to break down every aspect of the game, including catching, fielding, pitching, hitting. We're going to take video. We're going to look at that video, and we're going to look at your pitching delivery. Uh, we're going to look at your swing. We're going to look at your, you know, how you frame pitches as a catcher, you know, how you block pitches. And we're going to give you the fundamentals right from professional athletes to get you to that next level um, to performing on the field. We're also, because it's so important, as Kelly said, there's these numbers that a lot of colleges and professional organizations are looking for the athlete to hit. We're going to get a complete set of metrics during the on-field assessment, including hitting, pitching, fielding, catching, exit velocity, spin rate, velocity as a pitcher, um, glove, glove times, top velocities in the field, pop times for catchers. So all of the things that you would need to put on that, you know, college resume for baseball or softball. <clears throat> Getting starting with us is super easy and very affordable. So base only assessment is going to be $117 and that includes two months of base development on the platform. If you'd like the base and on-field assessment, it's only an additional uh, $70. It's going to be 187. That includes two months of base development and two months of the sport specific development. After that, you're going to pay $10 a month for the base only or $20 a month or 25 if you pay month to month for the on-field assessment portion, the sports specific. And that includes the base only as well. So you're paying $25 a month total is our max membership. Some great sponsors here. Um, you know, check them out uh, if you will. We have Sports Hub, I'm sorry, Scout, <laughs> the Scout Hub. And we have Sports Thread, Diamond Kinetics, Compacts. Uh, we have a partnership with New England AAU Baseball, uh, also some training devices, Clean Fuego, Axios Interpretal Training, and PowerFlex Performance Cord. So if you would, you know, go and check out our partnerships. Uh, we, they are partners with us because we believe in what they do. So um, I would check them out and, and see what they can provide to athletes. All right, next, just going to take you through uh, the profiles and what an athlete can see. So when they log in, they're going to get a personalized profile here. There's also access to the Area Scout shop, um, tons of gear that you can get there as well. Also, you're going to be able to request training from your evaluator, request an evaluation. Um, so the evaluation would be either base or on-field assessment, but requesting training may be that one-on-one -on -one lesson that you want with an evaluator. Um, myself, I do pitching lessons all the time. If there's a, somebody that requests a hitting lesson, I have coaches that they can go to and the expertise to know, you know, who's a good coach and who would really help them out. So I want you to see your evaluator as that person that can really be, you know, your assistant in navigating, you know, how to get better at the sport. You can also contact your evaluators directly if you have a question or just contact them by phone or email. So we have base athletes, premium athletes, as we discussed. You also, as a free profile, have access to three different assessments, uh, a mind an athletic mindset assessment, a nutrition assessment, and also our brand new neuro skills assessment, which is phenomenal. If you haven't seen some of our promo ads, go on and check out uh, YouTube um, Area Scouts, and you will see Josh Bell, MLB All Star, talking about how this neuro skills program that we're offering to youth athletes has really changed his career. Um, so it's a fabulous offering for us to have for youth athletes and really start that neural skills process, which is now starting to be used by all uh, major league teams. So when you get inside the premium access, you're going to be able to put in all of your stats in here. You can take your stats off Game Changer or any other software that you use to, to gather those stats and, and really have a really nice record of, of what you've done throughout the years. And you can go back as many years as you want. So if you have five years of stats, you can put that in here. All looks great stuff that can be printed out uh, and shared. And then we also have our metrics page where we're going to have those hitting metrics, pitching, catching, fielding, and also base running. So we are going to gather all that information and have it in here in one spot for you to be able to see where you are, be able to go back a year, go forward and see where you're getting to through the Area Scouts program and through your development that you're doing with us. 
Next, we just go over the base benchmark. So as I, as I said, it's an assessment of your overall physical foundation, and you're going to have biomechanics, athleticism, sequence, and endurance. You're going to get corrective videos from your assessment on the things that you specifically have to work on. We're not going to give you videos on everything you do well. We're going to give you videos for the things that you really need to pay attention to, the things that could reduce the risk of your injury, um, especially with the biomechanics. So in this case, we have a standing toe touch where the athlete is supposed to touch their toes for three seconds while keeping their knees straight. In this example here, the athlete only was able to touch their ankles, so they're going to get a mobility and a motor control exercise to help them get from a level two to a level three, which is our highest level. Now, if you are at a level one, you're going to get different videos that are going to progress you up to that level three. So people with um, lower biomechanics are always going to be able to progress in this program. Then we have our on-field benchmarks, and these are going to consist of, like I said, uh, fielding, catching, pitching, hitting. In this case here, it's a, a leg lift for a pitcher. Here's your objectives that our professional athletes have set. And then here are your correctives. This athlete had a toe dominant lift and their knee was tracking to first or third base, depending if they were righty or lefty. And then you're going to get a corrective video here as well with our director of pitching, Josh Zide, giving you a drill on how you can get better at your leg lift. Finally, we have Sports Thread. Uh, it's a partnership we have. They are a sports social media platform and they can be used to put all your information in and send out to college coaches as well. You can include your academics, videos, um, stats, all the things that you need to have a complete college resume. All right, so at this time, I'm going to share a video from Dr. Anthony and Zillow. And it's gonna be about eight minutes long and then we'll answer any questions that you have on the program. Just want to make sure I am sharing the sound before I click play. Nope. Sorry, let's give me one second. For some reason to kick me off the, the video. I have it queued up here though. All right, here we go. Hey everyone, my name is Anthony Anzillo. I'm the National Director of Sports Medicine and Performance with Area Scouts, and I just wanted to take a few minutes to discuss Area Scouts with you and discuss the base assessment that I created. So I'm a physical therapist and a strength and conditioning specialist. I've spent several years working closely alongside Dr. James Andrews, um, and I've worked with three different professional football teams and one college football team as a team physical therapist traveling with the team. So I've seen and used a lot of different assessment techniques and tools and have worked with a lot of athletes. So I had a really good starting point for creating this assessment. And now that it's complete, I can confidently say that the base assessment is the most comprehensive athletic assessment that I've ever seen or used. And that was really intentional. I wanted to make sure that no stone went unturned and that no joint muscle or energy system went untested in our evaluation of our athletes. So before we dive into the specifics of the base assessment, it really helps to first understand the why. So here at Area Scouts, our mission is to help every athlete reach their full athletic potential and help them continue to play their sport for as long as they'd like to and not have to give up due to injury or burnout. And to accomplish that, it really comes down to two things to reverse engineer that goal. One is we need to keep the athlete healthy and allow them to stay on the, on the field. Um, so it's not possible to prevent all injuries in sports, um, but there's always a risk, but it's possible to lower the risk by ensuring that the athlete's bodies are prepared to withstand the demands of the sport and by training in a smart way. The other piece is improving athletic performance. So by improving the athlete's performance on the field, it ensures that they have more fun, that they can be more successful on the field and more effectively compete with their peers and their opponents so that they can earn playing time and have opportunities to play at the next level. So that's really the goal of any good training program. It should reduce injury risk and it should improve performance and ensure that the athlete's body can physically do what their coach is asking them to do. So 
to understand how the things that we're going to measure directly correlate to athletic performance, it helps to view this athlete development pyramid that I'll show now. Okay, so at the peak of this pyramid is sport skills. And this is really how good the athlete is at their sport and how effective they are at their position. And just like the pyramids, pyramids of Egypt, the ones with the highest peaks are also the ones with the largest, most vast bases. And it's very similar for athletic development. An athlete's base or foundation are very simple things like fundamental movement patterns, strength, range of motion, balance, flexibility. Then the next level up are slightly more demanding things like speed, agility, power, endurance, athleticism. And these things all build on each other with the peak being success in their sport. So the better an athlete is on all these foundational levels, the higher their athletic potential is. And that's the goal of what we're going for. So before creating a training program, the first step is doing a really good thorough assessment to see where the athlete's individual deficiencies lie. And that is the point of the base assessment. So as I mentioned, it's a very comprehensive assessment where we look at a ton of different areas. There are actually 24 different tests and movements throughout the assessment, and we have it broken into four different sections biomechanics, athleticism, sequence, and endurance. So for biomechanics, we're looking at basic fundamental movement patterns that every human and especially every athlete should be able to do well. There are several different movements we're looking at, all of which require some combination of mobility, strength, and the motor control to put those pieces together. And the athlete is scored on their movement. And if they score poorly on a movement, that tells us that they lack either the required mobility, strength, or motor control for that specific movement. And that is flagged. And then they're later provided with a very targeted set of corrective exercises to address their deficiencies. Next, we move into the athleticism. And this is where things start to get a little bit more physically demanding. There are several tests looking at both upper and lower body strength and power. And we're also looking at various tests of speed and agility. Next, we move into the sequence section. And here we're talking about the kinematic sequence. And what that is, is basically how efficiently the athlete's able to transfer power from their legs through their core to their arms. And this is most evident and common, commonly seen with any rotational athlete. So if you think of a hitter or a pitcher or a golfer, that's how most of the good ones generate their power. It's derived first in the legs, then transferred through their core, and then delivered by their arms that is holding the bat, the ball, or the club. Now, this isn't just limited to rotational athletes. Another good example is an offensive lineman. So they're starting out low in their stance, and when the ball is snapped, they drive up using their legs and then transfer that power through the core and then deliver it with their arms to block their opponent. So this concept is really applicable throughout a wide variety of sports and positions. And we're measuring this through a series of medicine ball tests where we can measure their power um, in certain tasks that are requiring all these different body segments to work in a coordinated fashion together. Lastly is the endurance section. And here we're looking at both cardiorespiratory endurance and core muscle endurance. So endurance is really important because fatigue is another major risk factor for injury and for decreased performance. So the more resistant an athlete is to fatigue, the better their performance will be toward the end of a game, you know, in the ninth inning, the fourth quarter, the third period, whatever the end of their event or sport is, and the lower their injury risk will be when it gets to that point. It's also important that as they move toward the end of a long season, as their body may start to break down, the better their endurance is, the more resistant they will be to that. So as you can imagine, we can pick up a ton of different deficiencies throughout all these areas. And the real beauty of it, as I mentioned, is not only are we telling them where their specific deficiencies are, but they're immediately provided with very targeted corrective exercises to address all of them so that we can address those issues all with the end goals of having a reduced risk of injury and improved performance. So when it comes to who will actually be administering these assessments with the athletes, 
we have a multitude of highly qualified evaluators all over the country and all across the world. And all of them go through a very thorough training process, both in the base assessment and in the individual on-field assessments for the specific sports and positions. And there's, and they become certified in these assessments. And we don't allow any evaluators to work with the athletes until they're certified in the assessments that they're going to be providing. So you can rest assured that regardless of who you or your athlete are assigned to as an evaluator, that they're going to do an excellent job and that you're going to receive the full benefit of what we have to offer here at Area Scouts. So I hope that helps to answer any questions or sum some things up. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact anyone on our team and we'd be happy to discuss more with you. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. All right, so that is the base assessment. Um, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Lance. Yeah, it's just not the same having Ann here live with us. I know, <laughs> he'll be back in a few weeks. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, uh, we did get a couple of questions. We are, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on those questions till next week. We like to keep these just uh, under an hour and that's right about where we, where we're at. We had a couple minute uh, delay in the beginning. So we're right about that hour mark. So we are going to conclude this live and uh, we will get to those couple questions next week. Uh, next Wednesday, we'll be here again at eight o'clock. If you have any uh, questions about area scouts, you can go to www.areascouts.com. You can also look at the events that we have upcoming on that website. And um, look forward to seeing everybody uh, again next Wednesday. And thank you, Brian, for, for being on again tonight. Yeah, thanks, thank Lance. You. See you soon.